My brother got married in Jamaica six years ago. It cost me $2,300 for the week plus a week off work unpaid. It's not really a huge deal. I love my brother and I wanted to be there for him. I had a great time and actually met the woman I'm currently dating there at the resort. So it's been six years and my sister-in-law is pregnant. It was a huge surprise because they were planning on waiting a while. Now they're planning another wedding. I asked him why and he said he wanted to renew their vows before the baby came. I said that was cool but that I wouldn't be attending. I'm busy with work and my own life. He said he wanted me there. I said no. He said it was important to him I be there. I said that I already attended his wedding once and that was plenty. If he wanted me to go to his second wedding, he would have to pay me for my time of my trip home. I live and work in the Bay Area and our family is from Raleigh. He finally admitted that the first wedding was a sham. They got us all out there for a party. I told him to get lost. My mom called me to tell me I was being a jerk not coming to the wedding. I said I would go if my brother covered my expenses. She said I was being ridiculous. I said he was being a narcissist if he thought two weddings were needed. She would not relent. She started bugging me and calling me out on our family Facebook group. I told her around my brother to leave me out of their goofy damn wedding plans. Everyone started dogpiling me about not being there for him. I reminded them that I was his best man at the first wedding. Nope, not good enough. I had to be there for this because of family. I'm the only one who would have to take a flight for the wedding. I told everyone to leave me alone and muted the group to avoid any further discussion. Then they started calling me. I finally just started telling everyone that I wouldn't go unless they paid for this wedding and my time at the previous one. That just made people angry. So I told the truth. I said that the first wedding wasn't real and that my brother wasn't married and that he was probably only getting married because our family trust excludes kids born out of wedlock. It's not a lot of money, but it covers a full four-year degree or provides a grant to start a business. We cannot live off the money forever or anything. So this started a massive fight since many people had been upset about a destination wedding the first time and lots couldn't afford to go. They felt excluded and made fun of. And now the people who did go are angry they blew money on a party. And don't get me started on the gifts. So this has caused a lot of stress for them. He called to yell at me for outing him. I said he was a dumb idiot for not just quietly going to a justice of the peace. He said his wife is hormonal and wants a real wedding. I think they faked his first wedding to get both sets of religious parents off their backs for living in sin and now his wife has a change of heart due to her unexpected pregnancy. I don't need to see a second wedding. Am I the idiot? So they lied to every wedding guest and had a fake wedding to avoid living in sin, had a baby out of wedlock and now want everyone to come back for a not fake wedding so they can get trust fund money. Quite the Christian household. You are not the idiot. Your brother, his wife and your mother are for pushing this absurd fantasy on everyone else. Tell him you'll be attending his third wedding to his second wife but you won't be buying gifts. I'm guessing the brother is a moron. He didn't think things through or he thought he could scam the family into giving lots of expensive gifts a second time. The audacity to rag on his brother for not being able to attend the vow renewal six years after the destination wedding, knowing the first was not a legal ceremony. Then, to get your family involved to rag on OP after he confessed to OP the real reason for the vow renewal. He should have taken the loss and moved on. OP's brother is definitely a few sandwiches short of a picnic. Yeah, having a sham wedding and then letting the cat out of the bag by saying, hey, let's do it again. It sounds like they screw around and find out. Sister-in-law got her wedding. Now they can go to the courthouse and make it official. They can even throw a small party if they want. But this expectation that everyone shows up for a real wedding after lying to everyone about the first one is absurd and selfish. OP, don't waste your time with the loser. So yesterday, my boyfriend, 20, and I, 22 male, were looking after my niece, teen, because her mom is a nurse and got called into work. While she was over, we decided to make some food. I'd just taken the tray out of the oven, and my niece accidentally leaned her arm on it, burning her. My boyfriend quickly rushed over and started to help her treat it. I won't explain why, but my boyfriend has much experience dealing with burns and knows what he's doing. While that happened, I texted my sister to tell her what happened, that my boyfriend was tending to my niece and that she would be okay. About 20 minutes later, my sister turned up at my place and rushed to see her daughter. She was obviously worried and was inspecting the burn. After she calmed down, she turned to me and asked why I let my boyfriend treat my niece instead of waiting for her to come since she's a nurse. 
Honestly, I was taken aback and didn't know how to respond. My daughter was okay, so I didn't know what the problem was. Later, my boyfriend told me that it's never a good idea to leave a burn and that it needs to be treated right away, even small burns. My sister kept telling me I was irresponsible for letting someone who wasn't medically trained treat my niece. After that, she lectured her daughter for about 10 minutes on how to look after her burn, things my boyfriend already told her, and then headed back to work. She was also insulting and just glared at me and my boyfriend when she picked her daughter up. Today, our parents called to ask me why I couldn't look after my niece because her mom got called out again. I told them that my sister never called or asked us, which is strange because we're normally her first option since we live on the way from her house to the hospital, and due to my and my boyfriend's schedules, at least one of us is almost always home. I'm trying to see my sister's side, but I'm honestly struggling to see why she's so upset, even to the point of not wanting us to know my niece anymore. I would love any insight. Am I the idiot? Edit, my niece has some health issues, which means she needs someone near her in case she has an episode. She just needs someone else in the house most of the time. We aren't even in the same room as her. Not the idiot. You handled it correctly. I don't understand how a nurse could think it's better to let a burn sit untreated. To be honest, she sounds irrational over the whole thing. Maybe she's upset because you weren't panicked enough and dared to judge for yourself that things would be okay. Some parents cannot stand a calm adult when they feel their child is threatened. I'm a nurse. You don't let Burns sit around for 20 minutes. Your sister has issues. If it were a toddler, I could see her blaming you for the child getting burned. But a teenager? No harm is done and minor burns are an inevitable part of growing up and how kids learn. If your sister will take away the privilege of you babysitting for free, that's her loss. That's a good theory, I think. Decades ago, when I was a kid, we called those types of parents helicopter parents. Your sister should thank your boyfriend and not be rude. Burns need immediate attention. If your sister doesn't want to continue using you as free, on-demand childcare, then she can hope everyone else is willing, capable and available as you were. I look forward to the day she gets over her snit and tries to call you, only to learn you're out of town. I, male 27, am getting married to the love of my life, female 26, in a couple of months, and I couldn't be happier. My fiancé is an immigrant from India, so she has a naturally more traditional view of society, and while we might not agree on everything politically or socially, we always try to make compromises so everyone is happy. Now, my little brother, teen, is gay and has been out for about a year. I'm the first one he told, and I accept him for it. My little brother is like my best friend, so when I told him I was getting married, he was happy for me. Now, he and my fiancé have never really been ecstatic with each other, however they tolerate each other. The original plan was that my little brother would be my best man, and he was super excited about it. But a little while ago, my brother started dating one of his best friends, a male teen, and he's a nice kid. I like him, but my fiancé not so much. My brother asked if his boyfriend could go as a plus one with him to the wedding, and I didn't mind this at all since there won't be a lot of kids his age there, so I thought it might be nice to have someone he knows there. When I brought this up to my fiancé, she was livid. She hated the idea of him bringing his boyfriend to the wedding. Now, while my fiancé doesn't hate gay people, she doesn't really support them either. She insisted they would ruin our special day, and she was already letting my little brother go. He should be happy about that and I wanted my wife to be happy on our wedding day, so I agreed and told my brother that his boyfriend couldn't go. I tried to explain this to my brother, but he was equally, if not more, angry at me than my wife was. He called us bigots and was sick of pretending that he liked her for my sake. He called us homophobes and said he won't go to a bigot's wedding. Now he refuses to go at all, which I'm upset about because I really wanted him to be my best man. I love him and his boyfriend, but the day isn't about me. I want to consider my fiancé's wishes so we can both have our dream day. I also really do want my brother to go to my wedding. It means so much to me. So, am I the idiot for not letting my little brother's boyfriend come to my wedding? As a gay man, you are the idiot. You're letting your future wife's hatred, and I'm going to call it that, hatred, be more important than your love and acceptance for your brother. You're marrying someone who sees your little brother as less than her. Already letting him go? She can get lost. He's your little brother. He should be there with his boyfriend. Ask him how she treats him when you aren't around. I dare you. What would she treat your kids like if they turned out gay? The whole thing is just horrifying. This is not the kind of thing you overlook in a relationship.
It's not equivalent to someone leaving hair in the sink or leaving the toilet seat up. This woman hates Opie's brother and will do everything in her power to exclude him, and Opie is willing to go along. It's disgusting. I wish I could give Opie's brother a big hug. The kid doesn't deserve to be treated like this. OP has chosen the wrong side. My son, a young teen, has been asking for a dirt bike for three years, and this year I could finally afford one. It was delivered yesterday morning. I didn't tell my son, so it was a surprise. It cost me almost $2,000. I told my husband point blank that no one was to touch my son's dirt bike. I made this point clear because his buddy lives next door and has six boys, ranging from 7 to 16. He said he completely agreed and didn't want anyone to touch it either. I ordered it two months ago, so that's when we had the discussion. So my son gets home and his stepdad, my husband and I give him his dirt bike. The kid was so damn happy that he cried. He immediately started riding. I go indoors to start dinner and get the dishes done. I'm indoors for roughly 45 minutes when my son comes in, slamming doors, crying, etc. I ask what's going on and he tells me that my husband's friend's son, Tween, crashed the dirt bike, ripped off the front tire, bent the handlebar back and slammed the door. I follow him into the bedroom and get him relatively calmed down enough for him to tell me that my husband told him, this stuff happens sometimes, you live and learn, some stuff gets broken, it's not a big deal. And it was him who told my son to share the damn dirt bike. I immediately threw my shoes on and went downstairs in full mama bear mode, admittedly. I walk up to my husband and his friend who's standing by the bike and ask him who's paying to cover the cost of fixing the bike. His friend doesn't say anything and my husband tells me, it'll have to wait, no one can afford it right now. I lost it. I told him that he was the damn idiot who went against our agreement and he shouldn't have told my son to share his bike and that stupid kid had no business touching my son's bike to begin with. Neither of you forked over a dime toward the cost, so it's pretty ballsy of you to make decisions about it. He said he forgot our agreement and didn't think it was a big deal and that my son should have just said no. My son told me that he said he didn't want to. At some point I heard crying behind me and I turned and the friend's son was standing behind me crying. I comforted the kid. I told him it wasn't his fault and that it was the adult's fault for thinking he was big enough to ride it. He calmed down. But my husband and his buddy are calling me a psycho. Am I the idiot for flipping out and making a kid cry over breaking my son's brand new dirt bike? Edit, the kid was fine by the way. He tried to hit a jump, chickened out and bailed on the bike after revving it to full throttle so the bike slammed off a tree. He's not injured. I didn't realize the kid was standing there. I probably would have noticed if I paid more attention, but I didn't see him anywhere in the vicinity when I started going off. Not the idiot. Tell them they will see a damn psycho for real if the bike is not replaced. Have your husband tally up what he can sell of his stuff to replace the bike. The poor kid wanted it for three years, and dad let his friend's kid wreck it in one hour. It's not even his freaking dad. I'm so angry at the audacity of this man-child and his stupid friend. They must figure it out. Sell their man toys and pay for the kid's bike. I don't care if that's their tools, Pokemon collection, game systems, or whatever. They broke the kid's bike. They now lose their toys. Idiots. I have a feeling, based on both the husband and friend's father, plus only this context to go on from OP, this won't be done, at least not anytime soon. If the response was, deal with it later, no one has the money, I'm almost certain that no money will ever be put towards this replacement. Honestly, why are you with this loser? He disregards you and disrespects you. Your husband has shown he doesn't care, so take them to court now. I, a teen female, have recently been in quite a dilemma. My sister-in-law, 28, has recently announced her pregnancy to the family. Everyone was overjoyed and we had a little get-together as a family. My family lives in a sizable house and my brother, 29, has since moved back in to live closer to our parents and for his and sister-in-law's baby to be near our parents. So recently, my sister-in-law has been bossy around the house, mostly towards me. It started with small things I didn't mind, like getting her some water or reaching something high up that she couldn't reach. But then it started to transition into different things, such as she would make me massage her feet, which I always decline for I don't feel comfortable touching others, and she would always call me unreasonable and overreacting and say that she's pregnant and needs help. I told my brother about this, and he just chalked it up to her hormones acting up, so I dropped it. Last Friday, I had this important research paper to submit. 
and I was in busy mode that day and didn't really pay attention to anyone around me. I was wearing my headphones and didn't hear my sister-in-law walking into my room and demanding I wash the dishes downstairs. I told her I was busy and would do it later, but she flipped out for some reason and called me a slur and said she's pregnant and I need to help her and I said I just needed two hours but she just walked out. Finally, I went down and didn't notice the time. It had been three hours and I heard commotions downstairs. My sister-in-law was crying, telling the family I hit her and called her names. I didn't know where that was coming from because I never did anything wrong, so I told everyone what really happened, and yet they sided with her because she was pregnant, and she told me, for some damn reason, you're probably jealous your brother gives me all his attention now. My brother and I used to be close, and since he married her, he hasn't had time for bonding, and he has to work. My brother was at work while all this was happening, and something just boiled up inside me instantly. I told her not everything was about her and her pregnancy, and she started with the crocodile tears, but I didn't care. I stormed out and just went for a walk. Nobody has yet to talk to me, and I don't know what to do because I feel like I'm the idiot. Not the idiot. Do you have anyone you can talk to about what's going on in the household, like a teacher or counsellor? I'm concerned for your safety and worried about how your parents are handling the situation. This woman falsely accused you of assault. That is a big deal. Your parents have an obligation to ensure you have a safe home to live in. Your job is not to do whatever your sister-in-law wants. It's to be a kid. Go to school, hang out with friends, etc. It might be helpful to speak with your parents and tell them your concerns, possibly with a neutral third party as a mediator. Exactly. She's making things up to turn her family against her. And she's the kid. These are very dangerous accusations. I wonder if the brother moved back in because he can't take her behavior alone. OP, pick up your phone and record video of every interaction with her from now on. Every interaction, every time she approaches you. Get a camera for your room too. She's the idiot and will only get worse.